Hello, and thank you for joining me today for the student success webinar for students attending Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College this spring. Uh, I am super excited to start working with you again now that you've graduated high school and moved on to bigger and better things. I figured I could record a condensed version of the presentation if you're not able to make it or if you did make it and want to rewatch it, um, you know, to get more information. So let's go ahead and get started. Awesome. So your getting started checklist includes a couple things. So I like to call them the big four. That's the easiest way to look at it. Um, first, and, and you should have already done these, but uh, if you haven't, that's okay too. We want to make sure we get that completed before classes start. Uh, first thing, we want to complete the financial aid process. You'll want to meet with your academic advisor to register for classes. Um, you'll want to make sure you have reliable computer and internet access and a backup plan. I can't tell you how many times I hear, hey, Kim, my Wi-Fi went out or Kim, my computer broke. I don't know what to do. You know, the important thing is that Unfortunately, some instructors are more strict than others, and so they may not allow you to make up work in college. And so that's why we have to have a backup plan, and it's so, so important to think ahead. So think about resources in your area. Do you have a local library? Is there a McDonald's or a Starbucks you can go to? Can you borrow a computer uh, from a family member or friend? Something like that. We want to have that backup plan established nice and early in case something goes wrong. And last but not least, you'll want to order textbooks. Now, as you'll see on this slide, not every class is going to require textbooks. Um, so there's a couple different versions that are available. So you can check out the NEO bookstore if you haven't already, and your enrollment counselor can help you with that. But um, you, during your time with college, you may be exposed to different types of textbooks. So obviously, we have your typical physical textbook. You can read it, open it, take notes on it, rip pages out. I mean, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, there's also something called inclusive access, which means you do not have to order a book. It is going to be available for you in the classroom, either through Red Shelf, which is like an app within the classroom, or um, via uh, another link or a third party platform, it's called. So, um, you know, as you get used to classes, you'll be able to see you know, which, uh, which type of textbooks are going to be available and you can prepare yourself accordingly. There is a limited window to a charge to financial aid. So you just want to make sure at the beginning of every semester that you do, um, you know, take note of that deadline and order within that time frame. And I'll be here to remind you too. So you've got your books, you did your financial aid, everything's great, awesome. Classes are going to open on Monday, March 21st and you will access them using a program called Canvas. Now, um, there is a, an app you can use for Canvas. Obviously, we want to try and use your computer most of the time, but the Canvas student app is a great way to kind of access the classroom on the go. So you can check your grades, you can message your instructor, things like that. Um, but for the most part, you'll want to use your computer to access class. Every class you take will uh, last seven weeks, and then you'll have a finals week for a total of eight weeks. Uh, so you'll get used to the classroom format pretty quickly. Um, but my best pro tip, honestly, look at your syllabus on the first day. The syllabus is going to go over any classroom expectations. Uh, it will provide contact info, uh, information for your instructor, um, policies, things like that, um, that are really going to help you be successful in class. You also want to make sure you um, look for a due date calendar that may or may not be on the syllabus. Um, but if it is, it's a really useful tool to just kind of check things off as you get them done, because the deadlines for the whole class will be laid out. Uh, emails and class announcements are also important. These are super important. This is primarily how your instructor is going to communicate with you. So you want to make sure you're checking your email, your student email every day, as well as class announcements when you log into the classroom. Just like in high school, you guys, if you get started early and you complete assignments daily, you're not going to have a problem. You know, a little bit every day goes a long way. So just make sure you stay on top of it and you'll be just fine. Uh, continuing classes. So 
you'll see this is kind of what Canvas looks like. So up here, you'll see the dashboard. You have the student taking three classes, for example. In order to access each of these classes, you just click on the name. So Biology 101, History 101, Intro to Communications. There is an upcoming due date section here. Um, I say, you know, you want to always go by the syllabus to be safe. So I wouldn't even use this upcoming due dates. I would look in your classroom and, you know, use the syllabus to navigate your due date timelines. Uh, class is going to look a little like this. I know it's hard to see, but uh, it'll have everything laid out in modules. So one module equals one week. So you'll see, you should see seven modules and then, um, you know, finals will be available when that unlocks. Now, not every student will have this on their schedule, but a lot of students to start with take basic composition. And I'll tell you this, it's, uh, it's a tough class, not to scare you away, but to prepare you. Uh, this class in particular requires students to write a final essay, and that essay determines whether or not you pass the class. So it is a pass or fail option, which is why I host a webinar um, right before that essay is due to go over all the requirements and make sure that you are feeling prepared and set up for success. So for um, students taking basic composition starting on the 21st, I'm going to be hosting the webinar on Wednesday, May 4th. And that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, or 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So make sure you mark your calendars. Okay, let's be real. College is hard, just like high school was hard, right? But you got through it. That's the important thing. And no one wants to be like this girl, right? Nobody wants to be so overwhelmed and not know what to do. In those moments, because there will be moments, I need you to reach out to your resources. So of course you have me. I am here for you every step of the way. Um, for things related specifically to your classwork, it may be better to go to your instructor. You know, they're the ones grading the class so they know what to expect. You also have your academic advisor for things like scheduling, making sure you're in the right major, things like that. Your enrollment counselor is here to help you during the first week of class, getting acquainted and making sure that you're accessing everything and you know what you're doing. There's also student support services. So this is another service that you can apply to work with who, you know, is there to provide you with resources and make sure, again, you're set up for success. And then last but not least, your peers, right? You guys are all students together and you are going through this together. And so I actually, if you haven't joined this already, um, I would encourage you if you do social media to join our Facebook group. You can access that by going to facebook.com slash groups slash P2DNEO. So that's the letter P is in Peter, the number two, D is in David, NEO. Uh, so it looks like this, and you can see, you know, students post on here, I post on here, um, you know, a bunch of resources and motivational tools, um, you know, important due dates, things like that. So it's a really great resource to make sure that you know what you're doing and that you have the help you need, regardless of who you reach out to. So definitely join that if you haven't already. Um, we're trying to grow that community and make it even bigger and better. So you're probably thinking, okay, you're throwing all these names at me, Kim, and all these resources, but how do I contact them? Great question. Take a screenshot of this because this slide has basically everyone you need to know at NEO. Um, so you can see here, if you have questions on your class or grades, you can talk to your teacher. You can utilize tutoring. They still have tutoring at NEO. Uh, you have the help desk, which is basically tech support, the bookstore, uh, your academic advisor. So remember I was talking about they, they help with scheduling. So if you are a business student, you're gonna talk to Joy. Here's her contact info. And if you are in basically any other program, you're going to talk to Ashley and her contact info is below. Hopefully you have my information saved, but if you don't, there it is. You can save it now. So go ahead and pause this video if you need to, and you can take a picture of this slide so you can hold on to it. Okay. Financial aid questions and concerns. So um, as you guys should know by now, hopefully, I do not really work with financial aid too much. Um... I was spoiled. My mommy did my financial aid. Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, but, you know, there's great people at NEO that can help you with financial aid. So 
Um, there is David's phone number. He is the, um, the head honcho in financial aid, so he can help you. Um, but you can also call the general number or email them. There's that contact info there for a reason. Uh, you can also use something called the student account summary page. So you access that by going to my NEO. You, of course, log in. There's a self-service portal you can click on, and then there's a section there for financial aid. These are just some common fees that a lot of students have questions about um, because they are, you know, usually ones that, um, you know, pop up and students say, Kim, what is that? And so, you know, just a breakdown of those. You're welcome to read about them here. Uh, but those are kind of some of the more common ones you're going to see. I do want to take a minute to talk about academic requirements. Really what it boils down to, you guys, is if you're getting 80% or better, you're going to be fine. Um, just like in high school, you know, same thing. And so we want to make sure we're hitting at least a 2.0 GPA and a 66.67% pace of progression. And basically pace is just attempted credits over earned credits. So you should be able to see that on um, your transcript and calculate that. Uh, and your GPA, I believe, is calculated for you at the end of every semester. So every semester, uh, NEO is going to look at something called satisfactory academic progress. And that is important because those requirements are put in place by the Department of Education. So the government doesn't want to just give money to anybody. They want to make sure you're you know, doing well in class. And so if we are not able to meet these expectations, that's where your financial aid is going to come into play, or you could even be removed from school permanently. So it is super, super important, just like in high school, make sure you're meeting those requirements and you will be just fine. Hopefully we'll see you on the dean's honor roll or the president's honor roll with a 3.5 GPA or a 4.0. Just to continue academic requirements, obviously you can read more about that in the handbook, but um, there is another uh, aspect of that called the maximum time frame. Basically, it is put in place to make sure you are moving through your program in a timely manner. We're not just dropping and failing a bunch of classes. Uh, so again, pass your classes. This is not going to be an issue. And you can read more about that in the handbook if you'd like. Dropping classes. Let's be real. Sometimes you're going to get freaked out and say, Kim, I can't do this. And in that moment, I want you to stop. Think before you act, okay? The first thing you want to consider is, is it past the refund deadline? After that first week of class, you are locked in, which means you cannot drop the class without consequences. If you drop the class at that point, you know, after week one, you could end up with a W on your transcript, which affects your pace. Uh, you could also be financially responsible for the class. So important to think about. You also want to think about, is this class a prerequisite for my next classes? So if you're in basic composition, you need basic composition done to move on to freshman composition one. You don't want to drop basic comp and then have to redo your whole schedule, right? Why do I really want to drop this class? Is it because it's hard? Because let's be real, college is hard. If it was easy, everybody would have a degree. So let's talk through what the real problem is and what is so difficult. And I can get you all the resources you need to be successful. Big one, will this impact my financial aid? So again, if you drop after that first week of class, there is a possibility of uh, accruing a financial balance. And then you're going to have to pay that back. So why? That's like buying a car and then not driving it off a lot. You wouldn't want to do that, right? So don't drop your classes once you're already locked in and you'll be good. And last but not least, have I talked to my student success coordinator about this yet? If you have not talked to me, let's not make any rash decisions, right? Talk to me first uh, so that we can go over expectations and make sure you are, um, you know, on the, best, uh, on the best path for success. Almost done here, guys. Just want to leave you with a quote. Success is the result of perfection, hard work, learning from failure, loyalty, and persistence, right? Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to be hard, but it'll be worth it. And I know you can do this. So reach out to your resources, call me if you need me, and you will be just fine. Um, if you do have any questions, of course, let me know. I'm happy to assist. But otherwise, good luck.